And welcome to High School Physics Explained. Let me start by asking a question. What is 3 plus 4? Now, the quick answer, of course, is 7. You're making a number of substances here, of course. 3 plus 4 are two simple numbers that are integers, and you're adding them mathematically. But what if I asked you, what is my displacement after I initially work 3 metres and then 4 metres? Clearly now, my answer may not necessarily be 7. For example, assuming I walk initially 3 metres like so, I now walk another 4 metres in this case, and clearly my displacement is now 7. But what if I walked 3 metres like so, but then I walked 4 metres in the opposite direction? Well, now my displacement is only negative 1 metre in this direction. But what if I walked initially 3 metres like so, and then I walked 4 metres in that direction? Well, now my displacement is 5 metres. Last example. Again, I walk 3 metres initially in that direction, and then I decide to walk 4 metres in that direction. Again, I'm going to get a different value. So in each case, I'm going to get a different value simply because we need to take into account the direction that I'm traveling. As a result, as I've often said to my student, the most full answer here can be any value from negative 7 to 7. My displacement can be any value as long as I also know a little bit about the directions that each component has. So what I'm introducing here is the concept of vectors. What are vectors? Well, vectors are any measurable quantity or dimension that has both a size and direction. Any value that does not have a size and a direction is referred to as a scalar quantity. That is a measurable quantity that only has a size. So what are some dimensions that can be labeled either a vector or a scalar? Well, let's start with scalar. Time, for example, clearly has no direction. So it is a scalar value. I just mentioned displacement that clearly has a directional component to it. So it is a vector quantity. Another scalar is volume. Volume clearly does not have a direction associated with it. But velocity does. Again, velocity needs to have a directional component. So it is a vector quantity. Temperature. Temperature cannot be understood with direction, so it's a scalar quantity. But force clearly is. If I apply a force on you, and then I get another friend to apply a force on you, how you move will depend on the direction of the forces that we apply. If we apply the same force in the same direction, clearly that's going to have a different effect on applying the same magnitude of the force in opposite directions. And so you can see that force is a vector. Anything that has a directional component, and I've only listed three for each here, is a vector quantity. Now to help us understand that, it's also useful to have a look at what happens when we add vectors together. And I'm going to use the great animations from FET, which is the site based in the University of Colorado. So here we have a template where we're going to start adding vectors. And if I grab a vector from over here, you can see it is in a form of an arrow. And the arrow, of course, tells us the direction and the size. As you can see at the top here, I have a number of values. Now, there is this component over here, which is actually tells you how much is moving horizontally and how much is vertically. And I can show you what that looks like. And as you can see that the horizontal and vertical components combine to produce this red vector. I'm not so much interested that in that right now. I'm more interested in these two values here, which tells us the actual value and the actual angle at, at which these vectors form. So we're going to turn that off. But clearly we have here a vector. And then I can add another vector like so. And this vector is different. And I can actually make it different by pointing in different directions. How do we add vectors together? 
Well, when we add vectors together, so like my example where I added the 3 plus the 4, we had them head to tail. And so you can see the head to tail combination here. Now, you can continue adding multiple vectors like head to tail like so. And you can keep the process going along, but depending on how many vectors you want, let's say for, multi for a multiple stage journey. The sum of those vectors is the vector that is drawn from the beginning to the end. So, for example, if I wanted to add this vector here, you can see that that green vector is the sum total of the result of these vectors. If I change any of these vectors, by the way, my sum total will also change. Now, you can see I've disjointed them, but the actual size of the vector is still correct. So if I add, let's say, this vector over to here, and then I added the, get it the right place, and then I added this one here, you can see it adds up nicely. So again, adding vectors means simply adding them head to tail. The resultant is always drawn from the start to end. Now the order at which you add these vectors is not important. So if I were to place this vector first, and then this vector second, and this vector next, and then finally vector over there, you can see that this green line seems to not have changed, and we can prove it by simply moving it there. So in other words, when vectors add up, the order at which you add them up is inconsequential. So what we often say is mathematically is that they are commutative. What that means is, is that vector A plus vector B is the same as vector B plus vector A. Now let's clear all these vectors and we're now going to deal with two vectors. So I'm going to add a new vector over here and as I play with it you can see the value of the vector over here and the angle of vectors given. Here's my second vector over like so, and I have a vector that's going in this direction. So now I have actually done a vector A plus vector B, and as I told you, it doesn't matter which order they are in. But what if I wanted to actually have a vector subtracting another vector? In other words, assuming that this is vector A and this is vector B, as I told you, a plus B is equal to B plus A. This vector here, you can see that adds up like so. But what if I wanted to do A minus B? How would I do that? Well, with vectors, A minus B is exactly the same as A plus negative B. But what is negative b? Well, negative b is the same vector as my initial b. In other words, it's this vector over here, and I'll make it identical for the moment, like so. I'll increase it over here. So we've got the same vector over here. But negative b is actually that in the opposite direction. So as I move this over like so, you can see that this now is the same vector, extended a bit like this. You can see now these are the same size, but now this is now referred to as negative b. And so if I wanted to do, do vector a minus vector b, I'd have to do vector a plus negative b. So in other words, I would then have to move this vector over to here. I would get rid of this one. And now the result is that vector over here. And so this vector now that I've drawn in green is not A plus B, but actually A minus B, because I've added to A the negative of B. Now, just like in ordinary numbers, A minus B will not equal B minus A. They are not commutative. You can't simply just rearrange them. So when you're looking, let's example, at situations where you have, you're determining the change of something, where you do the final minus the initial, it's important that you reverse the initial vector because you're actually doing the final plus negative the initial. 
and that all makes sense in a moment when I do an example. As a summary, remember, any vector added together can simply be done by adding them up like so, and the sum total, of course, is equal to the start and finish. Now, how do you actually mathematically work all the values out? If I look at this value over here, you can see its length is 10. This value here is a length of 12. What is this value? Well, you can see that is equal to the square root of this length squared plus this length squared. So 10 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 244, and the square root of 244 is 15.6. The angle, of course, can be worked out. So if you use trigonometry, the angle given here, by the way, is the angle that is sitting here to the horizontal. So the way to work that out is just to move these vectors down here. You can see that it hasn't changed. In this case, I would have the tangent of this angle equals this value, which is 10, divided by this value, which is 12. And so you should get an angle less than 45. That's the case. You can see that can be worked out. But I'll show you that in some examples now. So now that we have a better understanding of adding vectors, let's have a look at a few mathematical problems that we can work out. So here I have a question. I have, I walk five kilometers north and then I turn east walking 12 kilometers. And we're determining what is my total displacement, knowing that both the size and the direction are important in working this out. So let's start by taking my five kilometers north. So here's my five kilometers north, like so. And then I walk a total of 12 kilometers towards the east. What is my total displacement? Well, my total displacement is from start to end. And so that green vector represents the sum total of the two vectors. Mathematically, how do we work that out? Well, we already know that this displacement here is five kilometers. This displacement here is 12 kilometers. And therefore, the final here can be worked out. And we can work that out by simply using, first of all, Pythagoras. And so what we have here is that r is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. And of course, that gives us 13 kilometers. So our displacement is 13 kilometers. However, you need to understand when you are talking about vectors, you must give both a size and a direction. So just saying 13 kilometers is not enough. You need to work out the direction. Now we can work out two directions. We can either work out this direction over here, or we can work it from this direction. Both are equally valid, but it's important that whatever angle you choose, you refer directly to the north, east, south, west, components. So let's use, for example, I'm going to use this particular angle right here. Now, you'll see, of course, that this vector over here can be moved over here. And so that is no problem. So I can work out that vector as well. As you can see, that five can also be moved over here. And that works fine as well. So you can see there's no problem. So that if I work five north and 12 east, I can do the same thing by doing 12 east and five first, as I stated before. They are commutative, that is, they A plus B equals B plus A. So let's work out that angle. Well, the angle, of course, can be worked out by using simply tangent. So the inverse tan, in this case, of 5 over 12 gives me an angle, in this case, of 22.6 degrees. Now that is not, of course, enough because where is that 22 degrees? And I usually uh, write it down in this direction. So you look at the east-west line. In this case, this angle is along the east vector over here, and then it's moved towards the north by our 22 degrees. So what you say is you say you start east, you then go 22.6 degrees, and you're heading towards the north. So that's one way of referring to it. It isn't the only way. If I had gone in the opposite direction, then I would have to have the complement of this angle. And that, of course, is equal to 67.4. So I'd start north, 
I'd head 67.4 degrees towards the east. So that is the same actual angle. Both are okay. I could, of course, also refer to bearings. And bearings always start from the north and head in the clockwise direction. And so the way to write that down is, well, it happens to be the same angle. So what we say is 67.4 degrees. And then we write T for true to represent that we are taking a bearing over here. So that's vector addition example number one. Let's have a look at vector example number two. Here I have two vectors. I have a 30 meters per second in a northeasterly direction. So there is my vector over here. It then says I turn and I head south at 40 meters per second. I have this vector over here. Now it then says, what is my change in velocity? So this is my final velocity, and this is my initial velocity, and the change is the final minus the initial. But if you know with vectors, is that we add them always. So of course, final minus the initial is the same as the final plus the negative initial. And so if I wanted to work out the difference here, I'd have to get my final, which is my V, and then I have to add this one, but the negative of that. Now this is my negative vector of that, and so I add it like so. And so as a result, the answer to the change ends up being this vector. Now I'm gonna move these vectors over so that we've got a bit of space to work with. And the question now is, is how do we solve that? Well, again, let's write down what we know. We know that this value here is 30. We know that this value here is 40. And what is actually this value over here? Well, the thing we also need, of course, is that angle there. Now, since we know this is 45 and this is 90, we know this is straight away 135 degrees. And so therefore we would now use the cosine rule. So C squared is equal to A squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. And now let me do this nice and quickly for us. So that's, of course, c squared. And that means c is equal to 64.8 meters per second. Now, that is only, of course, the actual magnitude of it we now have to work out the angle. And in this case, we're going to work out this angle over here. It's the simplest because we already have the south line over here. And by that, of course, we'll use the sine rule. So if we use the sine rule, we can say 30 over my unknown angle, sine angle, must equal this value, which is 64.8 over the angle of the sine 135. And that of course, that means that our sine x is equal to 30.8. And that means our angle, I'm going to put this over here, our x is equal to 19.1 degrees. Because we're starting from the south, we therefore say the actual direction starts from the south, 19.1 degrees and we're heading towards the west so there is our answer 64.8 meters per second at an angle of south 19.1 degrees west so there you have it a basic beginning of vectors at least in two dimensions i hope that has helped you thanks for watching bye for now i hope you found that video useful and remember like share and subscribe Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.